Thank you, Carl. Uh, thank you for the organizer for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Uh, it's really impressive. I think we would like to come back in the future. Um, uh, Carl uh, to give a very good introduction on what's going on in the field of lithium ion batteries. Uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, talk about the challenges in the, particularly in the scientific community, to try to see what's the next thing. I think Steve will talk about that later on. And what are the problems we uh, need to worry about? So this is why I coined this uh, title, uh, Building the Next Generation High Energy and Low Cost Batteries. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go over this again. Uh, batteries have many applications. Uh, talk about EVs, uh, JAT, uh, my boss will talk about the energy storage story. Uh, and then we have to remember that uh, why this is so important. It's really about 10, Carl has been working on this for the whole career. I only started working on batteries about 10 years ago. When we begin to look at this, thing, actually what everything we do today has something to do with the batteries. Like every time I come up, some clinicians, oh, you run out of batteries. So it's really a very important problem, not only for EV, for energy storage, but for everything uh, we need to do. And we are really running against the bottleneck of things at this time. Um, let's look at the uh, uh, EVs. Like uh, if we sell about 100 million vehicles in the marketplace today, I don't think we are expecting that we're going to make every car electrical. But let's say uh, if uh, the prediction has any reality, it's just a fraction of the 100 million vehicles. It's a lot. Uh, if we look at the Tesla, what the problem, uh, what, what's the problem, right? The Tesla is a fantastic car. Uh, the, uh, we use about 800 uh, kilowatt hour of battery. Uh, right now, they're doing really well. The cylindrical cells, uh, the pack level, the cost, is uh, already less than $200 per kilowatt hour. So it's a really very significant uh, reduction in cost. But uh, still, uh, this number, if you times this and this, it's a very, very significant, it's half the cost of the car. So it's, it's still a very, very uh, uh, important factor. It's, sometimes we think about, oh yeah, we. It's the energy density, but the energy density is actually related to the cost. If you open this trunk, it has a lot of space. The way Tesla sells this car is actually to pack more batteries than needed to make it work. And the strategy works, but the cost is a problem. And I mean, I already showed the chart from DOE. The cost, if we look at the lithium ion battery uh, cost, it really has dropped very, very significantly from like a close to a thousand dollar per kilowatt hour now to less than two hundred dollar per kilowatt hour now. This is on the pack level. So we have to remember, when we talk about cost of the cost, this cost of the cell level, actually that number is slightly higher than hundred dollar per kilowatt hour. But when you put them into pack, you have a lot of things to connect the batteries, it becomes about $200. Then, I want to show you that Jada will talk about the energy storage. Then you have to put the pack, when you use it, you put the inverter, electronic, everything in there, you double the price again. So the Tesla battery at the pack level, $200, for energy storage, becomes $400. So that's, if you think about, you're paying $400 per kilowatt hour for the battery, it's really expensive for energy storage market. Um, so what do we do is we look at, the, let's say you, your uh, system cost of the uh, battery, let's say this ion battery, is about $300, $400 per kilowatt hour. And then what do you do is you need to, I think Jada would have a very detailed explanation 
you need to translate not only worry about how much you are paying for the battery, but how long you use it, how much electricity is stored, how much you charge is charged, and the round trip efficiency. That translate into something the cost of electricity. So I'm not going to go through the detailed calculation, but anyway, so you are paying two things. You consider two things. One, how much you are paying for the battery when you put it in there. The other thing is how long you use it. And then this thing uh, over the lifespan is translated to cost of ele buck electricity cost. So if you take lithium ion batteries, the good ones, if you do a couple thousand, if you start with 400 on system level, you do a couple thousand dollar cycles, your cost is under one dollar per kilowatt hour. That's no good because you're not paying that much for electricity. So you have to think about how you are going to use this. Now, what you can do to defeat this situation, you can do, do two things. One, go to a much lower cost system to start with. The other thing, make it a, a cycle much longer. So uh, if you take uh, lithium ion phosphate, those kind of things, if you can extend the lifetime to more than 10,000 cycles, or use redox flow batteries that might be able to do that, then you get to the sort of the 10 cents per kilowatt hour level. Or will you start something new, like if you have ideally have a net acid battery, which is on the system level 100 to 150 dollar per kilowatt hour, and then you can make it long, last very, very long. Then you are in business. So that's sort of the very, very rudimentary, simple way of looking at this thing. Uh, we don't have many, many options. Well, if you go to the literature, Steve and I talk about this, right? If you read the papers, there are all different uh, options, uh, technologies you can think about. But in reality, when you put things together, there are very, very few options uh, you have right now. So you, you, let's say you start with lithium ion battery. That's where we are. That's the cost of cathode and no material, everything. And this, again, this is only on the pack level, it's not the system level. Um, now, you, if you keep on uh, increasing the energy density of the cathode material, uh, the whole thing, you, uh, in general, we probably will talk about that later, you reduce the cost. So ideally, if you use a, you can use a silicon anode, uh, the lithium ion battery can get pretty close to $100 per kilowatt hour. But if you can use lithium metal, which is the highest, has the highest specific energy capacity among any electrode material, and then you can couple this with high capacity cathode material, that's the, probably the lowest cost system we can think about today, uh, if you, we can make it work. So this is why we think, that for good news for Amino, you have uh, big job to do. Uh, we think lithium metal is really a very, very important thing for the next generation batteries. Um, and then there are two uh, systems we can look at, uh, at. One is to use the mixed oxide cathode material, near oxide cathode material, increase the voltage, increase the capacity, particularly go to high nickel AMC, cover that with the uh, lithium metal, that can get you to the lower cost, uh, lowest cost, and also the highest energy, specific energy at this time. So this is the nickel coupled with high nickel AMC system. Another system that can be very uh, inexpensive, of course, is the lithium sulfur, because sulfur is really uh, cheap and has a very respectable uh, theoretical uh, specific energy. And uh, pe uh, people from the audience ask uh, recycling lithium metal. At this time, recycling lithium metal may not be so economic, but uh, uh, if you use high nickel AMC, recycling copper than nickel may be more important at this time because it's pretty expensive and it's used in larger quantity. So this is uh, sort of the uh, program that uh, Carmen uh, mentioned that we have this new program called the Battery 500 Consortium that I'm fortunate enough to serve as a director. But uh, we have, these are not everybody, 
uh, I try to show you the diversity of the people in the uh, program uh, from really hardcore uh, ex battery expert pioneers in the field to very young scientists, chemists, material scientists. So we try to really uh, uh, I identify the few systems we can optimize on the system level to make as much progress as possible. Uh, we also have uh, industry, Tesla, uh, the three automobile, uh, and the uh, this metal uh, company, uh, IBM sitting on the uh, advisory board to help us. So the sort of the uh, approach on this program is to focus on this metal and two systems, AMC and the software system. And the goal is not to invent new materials here. It's really we take the best known material whoever is making and try to optimize it on the system level. And also another thing, very important, is we don't start from the scratch. DOE and industry are funding uh, lots of programs in electrode materials. So whatever new breakthrough they're making, if we can take advantage of it, uh, better off. Um, so this is kind of, uh, uh, we can you know, debate about the sort of the roadmap to next generation uh, batteries for either EV or energy storage. I made it up and not everybody would uh, agree with me. Uh, I think within the next years, the uh, lithium-ion batteries would still dominate. Uh, and then we have the chance to uh, incorporate uh, silicon anode and those kind of things. And uh, in that case, uh, we will probably be at about $300 uh, watt hour kg on the pack level. That's sort of the energy uh, specific energy we can expect from the best of the lithium-ion batteries. And then the cost would be 200 to 300 dollars per kilowatt hour. I'm talking about the whole system cost here. And uh, for energy storage, this is going to play a big role as well, not only for EV, but we don't want to forget the other chemistries for energy storage that will also be important, like redox flow batteries. Now, the, what's the next generation? I think this is probably the, the big thing we need to look at. Our view is uh, lithium metal with high nickel AMC or sulfur. And then the, for energy, in this case, we, we want to go beyond 300 watt hour per kg and then cost 100 to 100 dollar per kilowatt hour. And the, I think we'll continue to make advance in redox flow batteries. I also, if I have time, uh, I think Steve may talk about this. I think aqueous batteries for energy storage is really the direction to go. But then, uh, for the research community, 10 years from now, we still need to really dream on that. We, we, we need to fundamentally change the game uh, on batteries. That's where lithium oxygen, uh, solid state battery, other things that uh, we should uh, work on. Um, depending on how much time I have, I'm going to really go through this. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, people think this is an engineering problem. Uh, it's pretty unusual for scientists like us, right, to uh, uh, work on this. But that's where we believe really we're going to make progress. So uh, if you go do careful analysis, both for lithium sulfur, for AMC system, uh, if you're not going to uh, say, uh, just say, hey, I'm going to do this study and get it published uh, in a good journal, uh, you need to do more than that. Then you do analysis on, okay, where we are on lithium ion batteries, and Windrain is an expert on this, right? And the best you can get out of a lithium ion battery, about 300 watt hour per kg. And then you do that, uh, you use the cell, same cell configuration, you replace the anode with the initial metal. If you just do that, you are still roughly about 300 watt hour per kg. And then you think about all the cell parameters, what do you need to do to get more than that? You squeeze everything from this uh, configuration. So these are the 
uh, sort of, uh, if you say challenges or restrictions you have. First, you cannot use infinite uh, amount of lithium metal. Uh, the, the maybe no more than two times the capacity of the uh, cathode. That means you, you need to be very high efficiency in utilization of the lithium metal. And then you need to squeeze the cathode material, maybe go over more than 220 uh, a specific capacity, uh, increase the voltage, and then you want to increase the uh, cathode thickness, reduce the porosity, reduce the parasite weight, and then don't forget that you, your copper foil, your separator, all those things actually contribute to a lot of the waste in the cells. So you need to optimize all those things, reduce the waste. So those are essentially, we did all the calculation to, uh, to show you how we can make progress from the base cell. I will show you uh, some example on that. So if you start with a cathode material, let's say the 622 AMC system is a baseline material, uh, which has the uh, uh, reasonable capacity, about 190 or so. Uh, this one is really hard to get much more than 300 watt hour per kg. So in that case, we go to high nickel, 811, and then uh, you, we are not quite there yet. Uh, we can get for sure more than 200 or 210 CPC capacity. And when you stretch the capacity, stretch the voltage, then the problem you need to worry about is, uh, uh, is the material going to degrade? And then you generate the holes in the system, right? This micro-cracking. Uh, you can debate the mechanism I'm not going to talk about. Uh, now, we really worry about six, uh, 8111 compared to 622. And the good news actually is uh, 8111 is not too bad. And uh, this is what happens in 622, 8111, because it maybe has better conductivity. So uh, it actually is reasonable. And another thing is the surface stability. And you always generate a, a, a sort of a constructed surface layer on the uh, AMC material. Fortunately, this one doesn't grow indefinitely. So you grow this surface layer, and then it stops. So that's the same for 811 and 622. So in that regard, the castle material uh, is pretty uh, reasonable. Uh, right now, we use, uh, I don't know uh, what Winjian is going to talk about, the thickness of the castle material. Uh, for getting to more than 400 uh, watt hour per kg, the cathode, single layer cathode thickness need to be more than 120 micron in thickness, uh, and with no more than 23 or 25% 20, uh, uh, porosity. That's really difficult to do. That's what we have been able to do, but our porosity is still uh, uh, much higher than uh, needed. Now, the problem with the thick cathode is, uh, if you uh, even look at this, uh, the cathode material, if you look at the do a cross section from the bottom to top, we have a lot of very advanced tools to uh, look at locally what's happening in the electrode material. Uh, now what do you find out really is this is a charge, is a nominal charge discharge curve. And then you can look at the cell parameters, the, uh, the crystalline cell parameters from the top to the bottom. On the electrolyzed side, uh, from the top, you see this follows the charges charge curve very nicely. But look at the bottom. The bottom is nagging behind, which means when you make very thick cathode material, even you can make it not cracking, all those kind of things, it's difficult to utilize the whole electrode material at this kind of thickness. So we need to worry about that. And then, the most difficult problem is the lithium metal. Uh, lithium metal, though people, we know they're using lithium metal dendrite. Everybody, if you did anything on batteries, you know dendrite is a big problem for lithium ion batteries or lithium metal. But I want, what I want to say is, under the condition, the real cell conditions, 
in our system way before we see any dendrite formation, the cell already broke. So uh, there's a uh, dendrite formation, and then actually we are using very small amount of lithium metal and high cathode loading, very small amount of electrolyte. Uh, in this case, the whole lithium uh, electrode architecture degrade very, very quickly. So you form the whole thing, the whole uh, lithium metal can become a SEI uh, layer. Uh, so that's really uh, very bad. Um, see, um, so what we need to do is uh, really, uh, this is not a magic solution, not a simple solution at this time. We are looking at uh, uh, really the uh, combination of several possibilities. One, we have to develop new electrolyte because we are not doing all solid state batteries. We believe the castle site, we still need the electrolyte. So new electrolyte is stable against both cathode and lithium metal uh, are very important. We have to have lithium metal protection. Maybe uh, Steve can teach us how to do that. And then we have to have stable anode architecture. So we are uh, doing all these things at the same time. I want to show you a few examples of that. So if you go to the literature again, like I said, even for right now for the last year, uh, how much time I have, like, remind me, yeah. So in this metal, there uh, have been a lot of papers in the last uh, few years about stability of niche metal. And you can actually, uh, so these are the data we have. This is unrestricted, right? Uh, if we just uh, have niche metal, a very standard electrolyte, uh, no, uh, uh, really nothing to protect the niche metal, uh, no additive. This is, they fail pre pretty quickly. But this is again under unrestricted condition. It's a lot of electrolyte. Uh, and then very uh, uh, thin cathode. In this case, you no know, people report you can cycle lithium metal. If you do it carefully with high Columbic efficiency over a couple hundred cycles, that's really true. Uh, that, uh, that's shown by uh, the data we're getting. And then things get aggressively worse. When you, then that's how we show that, that you increase the cathode for uh, a realistic uh, more than 300 watt hour cell, that's the minimum cathode material you need to have and the different charges, charge rate. And then the, you can still cycle, but the number of cycles you can achieve uh, is significantly uh, reduced. Now, the, the real thing is really you need to do this calculation, right? The, the, if, you, if you do the uh, AMC system, how much cathode uh, and not all the, everything included you need in this cell uh, and do it in the right voltage uh, uh, window or you do the same thing for lithium software. We'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. That's where things become very, very difficult. Uh, uh, I will show you that uh, we have, I, would, I think it's fair to say, this is a, a pouch cell, 300 watt hour per kg. We have studied all the literature data. We tried everything reported in the literature uh, with lithium metal. And with the right amount of cathode, small amount, the desired amount of electrolyte, separate everything. We get 10 cycles. That's all. We get no more than that. Doesn't matter. I, I will challenge you. Go try that. Whatever reported in the literature. So we really need to do much better than this. And uh, this shows an example that we, uh, we developed new electrolyte that has uh, much less reactivity against the uh, lithium metal. Then you can significantly extend the cycle life. But if we take this combined with lithium metal pr protection, maybe we can, get, uh, uh, we can do much better. So this is really the test. Uh, what are we doing? So we, um, we, we are in the program exactly one year. Uh, based on what we have learned, we are going to publish this. Uh, so we said our team member, any of our team member publishing 
in this area. If you claim you have anything to do with the psycho life, or the energy of the cell, or the electric material, you need to do this. So there's a very specific what we call standard testing protocols. So how much cathode anode material you use, the uh, amount of electrolyte, and the including the separator, everything. If you don't do this, it doesn't really tell you anything about the real performance of the electrode material or the cell. We did something very similar uh, for lithium sulfur. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in the rest of maybe five minutes or so. The uh, lithium sulfur, uh, if you go to the literature, we'll talk about next generation batteries. Maybe lithium sulfur is the previous generation batteries, right? People have been working on this for a very, very long time. But really what happened in the last 10 years is uh, since uh, the, uh, the publication of uh, nanostructure carbon, those kind of things, people have spent a lot of time trying to solve the sulfur dissolution problem on the cathode. Uh, indeed, if you do this, this all helps. They really uh, re reduce the dissolution. Uh, you can get really nice data on the electrode material. But for the whole cell, it's really a different uh, story. Uh, if you look at the, uh, if you do all this, you know, not only the carbon is expensive, nanostructure carbon is uh, expensive, but it comes with a lot of porosity, a lot of surface area. That means you are very, very significantly reducing the amount of active material. Also, you make this thing. You, this thing all works very nicely. You have thin electrode, but if you make real cells, it doesn't work. So that's where when you make thick electrode, they, they just bump. So that's uh, actually uh, I have let's see this. Uh, if you compare the AMC cells with the sulfur cells, look at the cathode. Uh, material is half of the weight, but if you use nanostructure carbon, the cell high porosity, high surface area, that means you use a lot of electrolyte. The amount of electrolyte is more than half of the uh, cells. So if you do this, certainly it will be very, very difficult. So we really, that's, uh, we really need to find the ways to uh, increase the sulfur loading uh, and the reduce the amount of electrolyte in the lithium sulfur uh, system. Again, showing you this, though if you don't restrict the conditions, things will work very nicely. But if you really do it under the control, high sulfur loading control conditions, you cannot get the full capacity of the sulfur anymore. Uh, so finding new ways to uh, do lithium sulfur that you don't rely on high surface area carbon encapsulation is very, very important. We have been uh, really spending a lot of time. In this case, uh, I'm showing you just one example that we don't use high surface area carbon. This is carbon fiber. Uh, it's very uh, uh, low surface area. It's less than 10. Uh, it has reasonable capacity. But the trick is uh, you need to create a condition, make sure the reaction all happen on the electrode material rather than precipitating everywhere in the system. Uh, that's sort of the condition we have been trying to identify. Uh, I'm showing you uh, a few examples that uh, the where things work, where things don't work. So you can have a situation where the uh, sulfur only react with the electrode material to irreversibly uh, uh, form the particles on the surface. And then that's a condition that things will work. But then you can have a situation where things all precipitate in the solution and they form just a few small, small particles on the cathode. Uh, it doesn't work. Or you have a situation where the whole surface can be covered with continual uh, layer of uh, uh, sulfur and then uh, you, you isolate the electrode from the electrolyte. That doesn't work either. So those are the things uh, we need to work on uh, in the software system. Uh, let's see, uh, I'm going to skip all this. Uh,
Uh, so uh, what is the sort of uh, the challenge I have been talking about? Uh, one is if we are working on what we think is the best natural material, try to make a cell, increasing the efficiency for material utilization is really important. Try to utilize as much capacity as we can, reduce the waste. That, that by itself, I think, is an art and a science. Um, chemists and material scientists pay very little attention to this. And for, uh, the, for the systems we are talking about, high material utilization, thick electrode, all those things, we believe the different degradation mechanisms uh, show up. It's different from what we see under dilute conditions. We really need to understand that. And uh, uh, if we really want to work with the whole community, we encourage the whole community to work with us, look at what the real, the realistic testing conditions we are using, try to compare the results on level ground. And uh, then for lithium metal and many of the things we're talking about, I don't think there's a single solution, but we need to uh, work on all the methods that uh, are accessible to us. And I didn't talk about the uh, aqueous systems for energy storage because I don't have time, but uh, that's, I think, if you are talking about very, very large batteries, that's the directions we need to go.